So you walk into the parking lot and you see this blue tropical punch looking coaster basically conquering the first front entrance of the park. So then you nod. Challenge accepted. Thank you guys for tuning in to Rob's Rides. It's Rob keeping it 100 with all things amusement. And if you're watching this, it's between this and like a preliminary class worksheet. So, uh, so you enter the park and then you make it to the queue line and it's either way too busy, way too crowded, or it's very empty, depending on what time of day it is. Never in between. It's next to everyone's most memorable launch coaster in the park and by the fairest will that racks up the highest amount of park ridership. You get to the shady, oh come on train. Yeah, I'm just gonna proceed. You get to the shady queue lines and you're like, hell yeah, no sunburn for me. You go through all those switchbacks and then you reach this point where it splits left wing versus right wing. Just looking for that sorting hat to determine your fate. Gryffindor! Oh, that was off. Gryffindor! But no, really, you just look to see which side seems a little more crowded and you go on that one, even though you know damn well. They're the same amount of people and they're gonna go the same exact rate. Make it to the station, you notice that this ride is this floorless wing coaster, so the seats are on the outside of the tracks. There will be no floor after you leave the station. Huh. Shoulda wore sneakers. Yes, the fuck you should've. And it has the newer B&M vest restraints. Huh. Should've worn an oxygen tank. That too. You make this slow, methodical, you turn to the right before the lift hill. Being dramatic as fuck, you rise up this chain lift and you get to the 170 foot tall platform. You look down and you're like, God damn, why is this so high? Same thing that you ask yourself every day in college. And you just see Lake Erie and you see uh, Ohio parking line and then you proceed forward and you make this slow inline twist inverting just like you're the mother off of the conjuring during the exorcism scene <laughs> then you plummet to the earth so this wing overdrop just has you flipped upside down and you fall like a giant vertical loop. And at the bottom, you're feeling the forces. You're like, oh man, this being is about to be forceful. Man, are you wrong. You rise back up and twist out of this colossal emblemon. Next is this pretty large hill, which gives you more air time than a canceled Fox show, meaning minimal. Following that, you have to take this giant corkscrew and then Fast forward, there's like a zero G roll and then there's an inline twist coming back. Each one of these experiences just look like you're in this matrix, just slow motion flipping around. But it feels like you're sitting on your living room couch just watching a sitcom, probably watching the matrix actually. Binge watching the Game of Thrones. And then the zero G roll has this really cool um, keyhole effect where you go through these white pillars which is actually attached to the front entrance of the park. You kind of just feel like you're just slipping through the cracks like a, a kitchen cockroach. Between the zero G row and the inline twist is an inclined dive loop which probably would have felt better if it wasn't inclined. They could have let more force in that. They could have let more force on that spot. But after the inline twist is the end of the ride. Just kidding, but it, it might as well have been. It's the mid-course break run. Mid-course meaning 80% complete. I mean, there's a helix that's cute. There's a bunny hop, but that bunny's dead though. And where Fudd probably shot that shit. It's wabbit season. I should have listened to the voice. It's a, it's wabbit season. I don't even know how his voice goes, but eh, what's up now? And definitely not my ass off the seat. I'd rather be eating carrots even if they weren't steamed. Then it breaks and you're like, oh, okay. So what's our next ride, guys? Let, let's move this along. Come, get off the brakes, come on, I wanna leave. How long we got? The brakes are too long, they definitely could have fit in another hill. 
But B and M and Cedar Point was like, just, just don't even bother. Like Shakir or some shit. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But you'll definitely ride it again next time. I'll rate this ride a fun. Thank you guys for watching. If you know anybody that wrote Gatekeeper, just please share this video to them. See if they had a similar experience. Um, comment what you think. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. If you thought it was your up coasters, hit subscribe and I'll come back with a new video. Sunday. Gryffindor! Oh, that was off. Gryffindor!